The Midwest could experience anywhere between 6 to 12 inches of snow later tonight and into early Thursday, and we have the possibility of a significant winter storm developing right around the mid-Atlantic states. If we were to take a look at the latest depiction of the European model at this time, we have this big ridge that's going to steer the slow pressure system further northward, and as it, the storm system continues to move further northward, it's going to interact with a very cool air mass that's just going to be the north of it that's only going to be enhanced by this clipper system that's expected to be just the northwest of this low pressure system. If we were to continue to move forward, we begin to see the snow develop on the western side of this low pressure system to where Kansas City could get involved with maybe some snow showers or a wintry mix as a result of this cold air that's expected to filter in on the western side of this storm. And if we were to continue to move forward, we see that the area of snow definitely expands quite a bit as this storm continues ahead further northeastward and we see the pressure drop quite a bit down to 996 millibars as a result of the high amount of of instability we're seeing we're seeing a very classical mid-latitude cycle look where we're seeing thunderstorms on the southeastern side of this low pressure system and of course much of the precipitation just to the north and northwest of this storm system as there's quite a bit of cold air just so west of it that's creating a highly unstable environment for an enhanced amount of convection to occur and we do see that this um, large area of snow extends into Wisconsin very early on Thursday where we do see the snow become heavy at times in northern Michigan as well as in portions of Wisconsin and Iowa so you want to make sure to pay close attention to that in the Milwaukee metropolitan area potentially for your morning commute to work where the snow could be heavy at times just to the northwest of Milwaukee and as for Chicago it seems likely at this point this is pretty much going to be entirely a rain event as it does seem like the cold air will be just um, southwest enough to allow for the cold um, southeast enough to allow the precipitation to fall in the form of snowfall in Chicago and there's still this big ridge that's going to force this low pressure system a little bit further westward so as all well, Chicago would experience more of the southerly winds rather than northerly winds for any sort of snowfall to occur in Chicago the certainty is high with this storm system of course this storm system is expected to produce snowfall to the northern midwest within the next 12 hours so certainty is very high so you need to prepare for the possibility of over six inches of snow in many areas of Wisconsin and even as far south as Iowa and continuing to move forward we do see that this storm system will eventually move just north of the United States border there's still that very big persistent ridge that's built right over the eastern half of the United States so we're going to see a common trend here where it's primarily going to be a rain event for much of the northeast however the northern portion of Maine could experience some heavier snowfall with this storm as we approach the, fr the Friday time frame. So you want to make sure to pay very close attention to that if you're in the northern portions of Maine because the snow could be heavy at times as the storm continues to head further northeastward. However, beyond this storm, we do see that there's going to be quite a bit of a jet stream dip right behind it and that's going to create an unstable environment for potentially a significant storm system to develop. Continuing to move forward with what the European model is stating, it expects this jet stream dip to move further eastward and it's going to encounter the very warm and humid environment in the southeast and that's going to only enhance the amount of convection as a result. If I were to continue to move even more forward, we do see a small low pressure system develop as a result of the cold air that's moving very far southward and we're sort of going to see an upper level low develop out of this jet stream dip because this Cold air is expected to cut off from the jet stream, which will be just to the northeast of this upper level low. So as though we're going to see an upper level low bring some cold air to the storm and produce the possibility of snowfall, especially in the higher elevations of the Appalachian Mountain Ranges. And we do see this low pressure system strengthen quite a bit as it continues to move up the east coast, where we see the millibar pressure drop down to from 1,015 millibars to 1,000 millibars as it approaches the Carolinas as well as Virginia and we do see heavy snowfall on the western side of this slow pressure system now the key thing will be how much cold air will this upper level low inherit because it's going to get cut off from the jet stream so the amount of cold air associated with this storm will be very limited since there isn't a since this area of cold air won't 
really um, get supplied um, for the whole time that it's going to be in the southeast because this jet stream will eventually cut off, which will cut off the supply of cold air that this upper level low will be able to inherit. So as a result, we do see that um that there's going to be a decent amount of snow in the appalachian mountain ranges but not as much snow moving further eastward thanks to the lack of cold air and we see just the north of this storm also that there isn't a lot of cold air as the cold air is just going to be just north of the united states border at least air that's cold enough to support um, for the precipitation to fall in the form of snowfall we might see a wintry mix in washington dc and portions of new jersey as the slow pressure systems continues to head further westward however it seems like the computer models are fairly confident that most of the snow should be somewhere around mid-atlantic right now the european model is forecasting the snow to be primary primarily impact the higher elevations of the Appalachian Mountains, but we could see that snow move into lower elevations of Tennessee and Kentucky as well, as well as West Virginia. So you want to pay close attention to this possibility over the next several days where you could see potentially over six inches of snow in certain areas. Now, um, it also, um, this um, snow is also going to depend on the position of this ridge because if this ridge is a little bit weaker, then the cold air would move a little bit further um, eastward as well so maybe the areas further eastward will get involved and depending on where this cold air is located maybe even areas further southward could get involved where georgia and south carolina could get involved with some snowfall and i'm sure for many of you guys that would be your first snowfall of the season so it might be something to keep in mind at this point the european model is focusing on bringing the heaviest snowfall to the higher elevations of the appalachian mountain ranges but the gfs model does show a completely different scenario at least regarding this low pressure system so in terms of what the GFS model is stating at this time, we do see that the GFS model is fairly certain with this first snow. So moving through the Midwest, both of the computer models are as safe. Pretty much got a pretty high level of certainty regarding the trajectory of the soil pressure system as well as the strength as well as where the heaviest snow will fall. The GFS model a little bit more lenient on bringing the snow a little bit further southeastward to where Milwaukee could get involved. But for the most part, the forecast for this first snowstorm is pretty certain. It becomes more uncertain when we take a look at this next low pressure system where we do see that the GFS model expects the jet stream dip to be a little bit more significant. We do see... Uh, slight, uh, um, slightly more cold air, but again, this gets cut off in the jet stream, so it won't have an unlimited supply of cold air. So the areas that will receive snowfall will be over a very niche area, or at least uh, in a very specific area. As we do see that there's going to uh, the GFS model does want to bring some snow right around the um between the border of Georgia and South Carolina and portions of North Carolina as well, which is very interesting. And we do see that maybe even short it could get involved with some snowfall if the gfs model was correct still a decent level of uncertainty with this storm but i'd lean a little bit more to the european model scenario since it has been the more reliable model this winter but we can't rule out the gfs model either and we can't rule out the possibility that the forecast could change with this storm system with both of the main computer models not really in a high level of disagreement of where exactly the heaviest snow will fall but i'll keep you guys updated over the next several days i'm still leaning a little bit more to european model but there's still definitely something to be aware of if you're in the southeast even as far south as south carolina and georgia where the gfs model does want to bring some snow to those areas in the near future Take a look at what the European model forecasts when it comes to snowfall over the next several days. We do see that um, the European model expects a large area of 6 to 12 inches to move through um, Wisconsin, even Iowa, and, and northern Missouri. I am leaning a little bit um, to um, have a snowfall accumulation a little bit less than this because this is assuming that one inch of precipital rainfall equates to 10 inches of snow and since the temperature will be close to freezing as the snow moves through the midwest we should see a little bit more precipitable water in each snowflake so the snowfall total should be a little bit less than this but you could still see 
areas where you experience well over six inches of snow so you want to pay very close attention to that throughout iowa wisconsin even northern missouri for your morning commute and taking a look further eastward towards the mid-atlantic we do see that the european mall wants to bring a large area of six to 12 inches of snow in the higher elevations of the appalachian mountains so if you're in these areas you need to be aware of the possibility of a major snowstorm impacting you guys as we approach the late weekend and we could maybe see some snow showers up along the interstate 95 corridor but not really much if any accumulation at all as it'll probably primarily be a rain event for the areas further eastward and we do see that the snow interestingly does come slightly close to washington dc so potentially washington dc could maybe get accumulating snowfall if we were to see a track that shifts a little bit further eastward but that still has yet to be seen but uh, i'll keep you guys updated it really all depends on the ridge it's just it's going to be just so east of this low pressure system now let's take a look at the gfs models forecast the gfs model is forecasting a very similar um uh snowfall accumulation forecast with this first snowstorm through the midwest around 6 to 12 inches of snow over a large area of the midwest should be a slightly less than this but right around the ballpark and then we do see that the snowfall area definitely does become different for the mid-atlantic when we take a look at the gfs model scenario where we do see the snow move as far south as georgia and maybe even charleston or the savannah area of georgia could get involved with potentially some snowfall if we were to see the, the snow shift a little bit further southward and we do see south carolina and charlotte get involved with snowfall accumulating snowfall in this scenario that really all depends on the position of this old pressure system and how much cold air will move further southward and i'll keep you guys updated once we do receive changes when it comes to certainty with this forecast because this definitely could bring snow into the more populated areas of the southeast Take a look at the Futurecast radar to show you guys when you should expect the worst of the snowfall in the Midwest. So we should begin to see the snow develop in the very early morning hours of Thursday where we will see a wintry mix mix um, begin to develop in northern missouri where potentially kansas city could get involved with it a little bit and then we do see the snow air quickly expand as we approach 7 a.m and 8 a.m on thursday and moving forward we do see the snow definitely um take up a large portion of wisconsin so for your morning commute and even going into noon time the snow should continue and it's not until um thursday afternoon where the snow should mainly be out of wisconsin and iowa at this time but michigan will still be involved with the snowfall up until the um later time on thursday and we do see the snow eventually move into uh, maine right around the uh, um evening time on thursday and into early friday as well so you want to pay very close attention to that so here's my winter storm forecast for the Midwest as well as the Mid-Atlantic at this time. So the certainty is very high for Wisconsin. You should experience over 6 to 12 inches of snow or right around um, 6 to 12 inches or so. And then for the Mid-Atlantic, the forecast is still uncertain. But some areas in the higher elevations could experience close to a foot of snow. And potentially Charlotte could get involved with some snowfall. And maybe Washington, D.C. if this snow were to move further east enough, there's still a decent amount of uncertainty. So I'll keep you guys updated once we get more, um, once we get changes with the computer models forecast and see where exactly the ridge will position itself to really determine who will get the heaviest snowfall and how much cold air there will be for um, to determine how large of an area of snowfall we will see in the mid Atlantic as we approach next week. But you want to at least be aware of the possibility of winter storm in the mid Atlantic states. But uh, thank you guys for watching.